All right. Onward and upward. Next up. This is very important. This is a Rick question. Who emerges as wide receiver one in the 2024 class? Marvin Harrison Jr., our elite neighbors, or maybe even someone else. You want to take first crack at that? Yeah, I'm going to go with Marvin Harrison Jr. I think <laughs> <a> Malik. <laughs> <laughs> I think Malik Neighbors is going to be unique. The reason I'm going with Marvin Harrison Jr. because I think he's going to get better quarterback play out of Kyler Murray than a Malik Neighbors will get out of a Daniel Jones. So I lean towards Marvin Harrison Jr. Do you care at all about – oh, oh, you might have some insights too. Do you care at all about these fights, Malik Neighbors in particular, he and Kirby Joseph, the safety for Detroit in the um, joint practices, got after. I think Kirby probably got the best of them, but they're both wearing helmets, so who cares? But do you care about all the fighting? Because at, at one point, I don't care, but if, when you watch that fight between uh, Malik and the rest of the Lions defense, someone's going to get hurt, and that just defeats That's the purpose. That's stupid. Yeah. yeah. Go out there, you're working, compete. I mean, to me, the fighting is the BS part of it. So who's tough guy, this tough guy, yada, 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 yada. <laughs> Let's go out there and beat the guy's rear end between the white lines when the whistle blows until the whistle stops and then walk away. So but you, I, don't, you I, don't mind I, a little push and shoving, though. I know, but it's stupid. It really, okay. Unless it's someone's just totally disrespecting you or just, what, what did the kids say now, punking you? Is that a right. word? I think they said that 10 years ago, but we'll go with that, sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things... I saw a report somewhere. I don't know who said it, so I don't want to attribute it to any one person or player. But that last year when these two teams had a joint practice, that the Lions came out like with their hair on fire, to use a Rick Spielman term. And I think that the Giants didn't want to feel flat-footed this time around, so maybe that fed into it. But I, I take your larger point. Uh, Daniel Jones was mixing it up the day before the Malik neighbors Kirby Joseph fight. <laughs> so, right, I, I'm with you. I, I like the fire in the belly to to borrow a Priscoism, but you don't need to be throwing punches. No. So you like uh, Marvin a little better than Malik. Uh, I I can't necessarily dispute that, but I'm going to go through quickly the uh, wide receiver, the rookie wide receivers who were uh, reception leaders in yards. Um, the Pat, Puka Spielman Nakua last year, obviously Garrett Wilson the year before that, Jamar Chase in 2021, Justin Jefferson in 2020. And these are some gaudy numbers, so I think we probably have a dollar bet on this already. If not, we can fire up the dollar bet machine. And then I'll go with A.J. Brown in 2019. So Justin, Jamar, and Puka all had north of 1,400 yards. Garrett had 1,100, and then A.J. Brown had um, just over 1,000. What's the number? On? Okay, here's the number. 1,150 yards. This is a dollar bet, Harry. <laughs> Does Marvin go over 1,150 yards or under? All right. This is, I already want to doubt. I'm taking Marvin and over that. No question. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it, try to make it close. Michael Thomas in 2016 went for 1,137 yards. That was a good year. All right. We'll see. 1,150 yards. Rick is taking the over with Marvin Harrison Jr. Does Malik get over 1,000? Depends on the quarterback play. I think it's going to be better, but yeah, we'll see. If he stays healthy. I'm trying to look down. Roma Dunze, his issue is that he's got so many people on that team that can catch passes. That sort of uh, lessens his his playmaking ability. It doesn't mean he can't do it. It's just he's not in a situation like, say, Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. was drafted next. He's It feels like he's still sort of learning the ropes as, as a, something other than a deep threat. Xavier Worthy. And Ricky Pearsall are the other first round picks along with Xavier Leggett. And those guys, Ricky Pearsall's battle injury, Xavier Worthy's undersized, and Xavier Leggett, he's like a Brian Thomas Jr. in my mind. All right. Dollar bet in the books. We'll have to do a recap of the dollar bets maybe before next week's show to see where we are and how much money you owe me. By the way, someone left a comment on uh, Apple Podcast uh, <laughs> that I was crowing about beating you in the dollar bets. And they say, do you know that Rick Spielman is the only reason to listen to this podcast because of all his knowledgeable insights? <laughs> so you must have written that review. I thought it was funny that they, they were mad because I was crowing that I finally won something. It, 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 in the dollar bet controversy is still under. I have not gotten an official ruling. There was a, a, right. an out when I wasn't there. It was. That's I fair. On the show, there was a lot of a lot of discrepancies, but I'll focus in and hone in on this because I did feel bad the first year we did this. It was a, it was an arse whooping. It was. And so 
this year I'll, I'll be a little bit more focused and honed in on uh, the dollar bets. Locked in, yeah. You you were uh, you were a little too a little too arrogant last year. You you thought you were just going to steamroll me, <laughs> uh, or I just felt uh, I didn't have that killer instinct in me. You didn't like, have. That's right. You were uh, you had a Super Bowl hangover. Yeah. <laughs>